Mount St. Helens, a majestic peak in Washington state, had always held a silent power. Then on May 18, 1980, that silence shattered. With the force of a bomb, the volcano erupted. The blast ripped away the top of the mountain, sending a plume of ash and gas miles into the sky. The surrounding landscape was instantly transformed. Forests were flattened like matchsticks. Rivers were choked with mud and debris. The air itself was thick with ash, blotting out the sun. The eruption of Mount St. Helens was a stark reminder of nature's raw power. It left behind a scene of utter devastation. Where once there had been lush forests and teeming life, there was now only a gray wasteland. Scientists called it a blank slate, a tabula rasa upon which the story of life would have to be written anew. But how does life return to a place so completely transformed? The eruption of Mount St. Helens had a profound impact on the surrounding ecosystem. The blast and the subsequent pyroclastic flows, a superheated mix of gas and volcanic debris, sterilized the landscape. The once vibrant forests were reduced to a tangle of fallen trees, stripped bare of leaves and branches. The air and the ground were choked with ash, a thick blanket that smothered any signs of life. The once clear rivers and streams were now mudflows, choked with debris and sediment. The scale of the devastation was difficult to comprehend. It wasn't just the immediate impact of the blast, the eruption had triggered a cascade of ecological disruptions. The loss of vegetation led to erosion and landslides. The lack of plant cover altered the water cycle, causing changes in stream flow and water quality. The once rich soil was now depleted of nutrients, making it difficult for anything to grow. The recovery, it seemed, would be a long and arduous process. In the face of such widespread destruction, scientists faced a daunting challenge, how to help this devastated ecosystem recover. They knew that natural processes would eventually restore the land, but they wondered if there was a way to accelerate the process. Their attention turned to a small, unlikely hero, the pocket gopher. These burrowing rodents, common in the Pacific Northwest, were known for their ability to move vast amounts of soil. Could they, the scientists wondered, play a role in breathing life back into Mount St. Helens? In 1982, two years after the eruption, an experiment was launched. Pocket gophers were carefully trapped from nearby areas and introduced to plots of land on the slopes of the mountain. These plots, still largely barren, served as a living laboratory. The scientists wanted to see if the gophers' burrowing activities would have any impact on the recovery of the land. It was a simple experiment but one with potentially significant implications. Burrowers and Builders – The Gophers' Impact The pocket gophers, oblivious to their role in this grand ecological experiment, got to work doing what they did best – digging. They burrowed through the ash and debris, creating tunnels and chambers beneath the surface. While this might have seemed disruptive, it was, in fact, exactly what the devastated landscape needed. The gophers burrowing had a surprising number of beneficial effects. Firstly, their tunnels aerated the soil, allowing air and water to penetrate the compacted ash. Secondly, and perhaps even more importantly, their digging brought buried soil, rich in nutrients and organic matter, to the surface. This mixing of soil layers was crucial for plant growth. The gophers were also inadvertently playing another vital role. They were acting as dispersers. As they moved through their tunnels, they carried with them seeds, spores, and fungi from the surrounding areas. These hitchhikers, buried deep in the gophers' fur or clinging to bits of soil, were deposited throughout the tunnels. In this way, the gophers were helping to re-establish the intricate web of life that had been decimated by the eruption. Networks of Life, Mycorrhizal Fungi Among the most important passengers on this subterranean journey were mycorrhizal fungi. These fungi form a symbiotic relationship with plants, their thread-like mycelia intertwining with plant roots. This network allows the fungi to access sugars produced by the plants, while the plants benefit from the fungi's ability to extract nutrients and water from the soil. This mutually beneficial relationship is crucial for plant growth especially in nutrient-poor environments like the post-eruption landscape of Mount St. Helens. The gophers, by transporting these fungi and incorporating them into the soil, were essentially acting as ecological engineers. They were creating the conditions necessary for plants to re-establish themselves. This, in turn, would pave the way for the return of other organisms, from insects to birds to mammals, all dependent on plants for food and shelter. The gopher's impact, though subtle and unseen, was setting in motion a cascade of ecological restoration. 
from barren to blooming contrasting recoveries. The impact of the Gophers activity became evident within a few short years. The plots where they had been introduced were noticeably greener and more vibrant than the control plots, which had been left to recover naturally. Six years after the experiment began, the gopher plots boasted an average of 40,000 thriving plants, while the control plots remained largely barren. The gophers had in effect jump-started the process of ecological succession, transforming the landscape from a desolate wasteland into a burgeoning ecosystem. The gopher experiment also highlighted the importance of pre-existing ecosystems in post-disturbance recovery. Areas that had been clear-cut before the eruption, lacking the mature forests and their associated mycorrhizal networks, recovered much more slowly, even with the gophers' help. This underscored the vital role that intact ecosystems play in resilience, serving as reservoirs of biodiversity and ecological function. Little Pause, Big Impact Lessons for the Future The story of the pocket gophers and Mount St. Helens holds a powerful lesson for us all. Even in the face of seemingly insurmountable challenges, even the smallest creatures can play a disproportionately large role in ecological recovery. The gophers, through their humble burrowing, help to heal a landscape scarred by a cataclysmic event. Their story is a testament to the interconnectedness of nature and the surprising ways in which seemingly insignificant actions can have profound and lasting impacts. As we face a future marked by increasing environmental change and degradation, the lessons learned from Mount St. Helens take on even greater significance. By understanding the complex interactions that govern ecosystems, by appreciating the vital roles played by even the smallest creatures, and by harnessing the power of natural processes, we can hope to restore damaged landscapes and build a more sustainable future for all.